don't buy a high efficiency furnace if your objective is to save money. For most people, it is not worth the cost. As a smart man once said, if a person is not careful, he can go broke saving money. I know that can go both ways, but I've been asked many times to make a video on this topic, so I'm finally making it to share my opinion with you, which you are free to agree or disagree with, and I would love to hear your reasons why in the comment section below. Here are my three reasons why I think high efficiency furnaces are not worth the price. Reason number one is that they do not last as long as standard 80% furnaces. Most of the time when a furnace is replaced, the cause of replacement is a failed heat exchanger. Standard 80% furnaces have one heat exchanger to worry about, whereas high efficiency furnaces have two, with the secondary being a condensing heat exchanger, which further increases the chances of failure. They also have more parts and electronics built into them, which is that much more things that can go wrong and do go wrong in high efficiency furnaces. What I've seen from my experience is that high efficiency units last about 10 to 15 years, whereas the standard efficiency 80% furnaces easily go over 20 years. Reason number two is that the upfront cost of installation is way more for a high efficiency furnace than a standard efficiency furnace. Many HVAC companies will have two options you can choose from, or sometimes three, a low end and a high end, or maybe a low, medium, and a high. The low being a 80% standard efficiency furnace, the medium would usually be a 90% high efficiency furnace, and the high end would be a 98% modulating furnace. And the price goes up by about $1,000 with each option. So if the standard efficiency is, let's say 2,500, the next one would be 3,500, and the highest one would be, let's say about $5,000. The high efficiency furnace is usually two to 4,000 more than the standard efficiency furnace to install. It would take 10 years, if not more, to recoup that cost in energy and gas savings. If you live in the South with short winters where you only use the furnace two or three months out of the year, then you may not even recoup your costs at all. But if you're using propane, LP can be pretty expensive. So in your case, it may be worth considering a high efficiency furnace. Or maybe not. Because, reason number three, the cost of repair of a high-end furnace is high. For example, on an 80% furnace, a new inducer motor would cost about 200 bucks, let's say. On a modulating furnace, a new inducer motor can cost $1,500. So let's say that you have a six year old modulating furnace that has been working wonderfully. You love it for six years. The warranty expired on year five and now on Christmas day, bam, the inducer motor fails. Any energy or gas savings that you made up until that point are immediately wiped out. And with the trip fees and the labor fees, the price climbs even further. And to make matters worse, oftentimes these modulating parts are not readily available and you have to order them. So now you're stuck for a couple of days waiting for the part to arrive before you can get your heat back on. Those are my three reasons. And here are three more things to consider before I wrap up. One, perhaps insulating your house better instead of getting a more expensive furnace is a better option. Many houses are poorly insulated and that is actually much more expensive than having an inefficient furnace. Two, if you might be moving out of your house in a couple of years, then getting an expensive furnace is not very cost effective. New homeowners are mostly interested in how new a furnace is, not how efficient. And number three, there's talk going around that 80% furnaces will be banned soon. I looked into that and I could not find any concrete evidence to back that up. All I found is that the Department of Energy is proposing a new energy efficient plan that if approved, will go into effect on 2029, which would require all newly installed furnaces to be at least 95% efficient. So in the foreseeable future, this is not something to be concerned about. And in summary, here are some of my thoughts about old furnaces. First of all, just like the rest of the appliances, if you have an old furnace and you want to replace it simply because it's old, but it's working great, I would highly advise against that. The old furnaces are usually way more durable and better quality than the new stuff. If you're worried about safety, then just schedule a furnace inspection to get it checked out. Other than that though, if it's working good and it passes the safety inspection, I would keep it as long as it lasts. And I know that some of you would want to know what would I personally do, 
Let's say I have an old furnace, it breaks down and I have to get a new furnace. Which one would I get? Personally, I would do exactly what I'm saying in this video. I would get an 80% standard efficiency furnace as my new furnace because life is just easier that way. That's just my little opinion, but I would love to hear your thoughts on the matter in the comment section below. Don't forget to mash that like button and I'll see you there. By the way, I'm looking at my calendar here and it looks like next week we're starting Diarrhea Awareness Month. It runs until Friday.